Ladies and gentlemen, this is breaking news. Hit subscribe to this channel. I'm going to explain to you exactly why this is happening in, the, in a way that you might not have heard before, especially if you support President Trump like I do. So hit subscribe, get this segment viral. This is McConnell leans towards convicting Trump. About an hour ago, Axios, there's a better than 50-50 chance that Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell would vote to convict President Trump in an impeachment trial, sources tell Axios. Okay, is this accurate? I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that McConnell is likely not going to convict President Trump. And I'm going to say that this is media, this is a public relations onslaught against President Trump because they're blaming him, they're blaming his words for what took place in Washington. Now, if you utilize that standard against Democrats, they're culpable for five to six months of very uh, fiery but peaceful protests, according to CNN, that led to about $1 billion to $2 billion worth of insurance claims throughout the country. They're not taking Trump to a, uh, to a court of law. They're not charging him with any specific crime. They cannot do so because it would be laughed out of court. They, the, the, I did a segment the other day, so hit subscribe to this channel because I'm going to explain this to people. Uh, and there's a lot of, there's so much analysis going on, especially from the left pertaining to, every, to, to what's transpired the past week. And almost all of it is just pure propaganda. The reality is the following. They're not going after President Trump in a court of law. Why? Because they would be laughed out of court. They're impeaching President Trump, or very likely going to impeach President Trump again, as a final insulting gesture to try to erase him from history and to try to erase any potential allegations or valid concerns or accusations President Trump and others have made. Josh Hawley, Ted Cruz, over 100 Republicans. So... They did the same type of thing with Biden's son, his Caligula, his laptop. They suppressed thought, emotion. You can't even be suspicious now. If President Trump or Josh Hawley or Ted Cruz or anyone is even remotely has that emotion or that sentiment, they've even suppressed that. And they've bundled it all up within this web of outrage. What took place, I categorically condemn. That should never have happened. That should never have happened, ladies and gentlemen. That was an absolute unmitigated catastrophe. The loss of life was the unmitigated catastrophe and disaster and tragedy. That's the main. Those five people should be alive today. Now, in terms of what took place, President Trump didn't tell anyone to do anything. The biggest misstep was having um, those protests on January 6th. There was no reason for that because there was no, there's no clear objective. We needed, President Trump should have, or the Justice Department under President Trump should have already had a special counsel for Caligula, Biden's son, and a, a computer with thousands upon thousands of incriminating emails. That now has been not only swept under the rug, there's no political will. McConnell himself wants to, and this is what the real issue is about. McConnell is an establishment, like in a, a, an institutional establishment Republican. He might not be a Republican in the name only. He might not be a never Trumper, but he is the leader of the Senate or, you know, was the leader of the Senate. And these people derive their income, their source of power from government. What happened the, the, the other day in Washington, D.C. was a catastrophe because of the loss of life. But it was an unmitigated disaster because it took every ounce of political influence from President Trump away. And now the establishment Republican Party or the Never Trumpers, this is their chance. Ben Sass, Mitt Romney, this is their chance. And so the future of the Republican Party, there's going, to be, there's going to be an ideological battle for the future of the Republican Party. 
McConnell might actually convict President Trump, which would be, in, in one way, the end of the Republican Party. In another way, it could be they could try to, you know, make it like the beginning of some new political party. Or I should say, they might try to market that decision or uh, explain that type of horrendous decision to convict President Trump after an impeachment by saying, well, you know, uh, we're going to do everything good that President Trump did, but we're not going to engage in his behavior or his rhetoric. And this was a rebuke of um, what took place the past couple of months. And whereas there might have been certain valid concerns, the manner in which they were articulated was, um, you know, uh, completely irresponsible. And this is for future generations to see, whatever, whatever they would say. So that McConnell could then could say that. Now, would 74 million supporters of President Trump, would they be okay with that? No. Would re- the Republican Party be done for at least four years? Yes. They might not care. You would single-handedly tank the Republican Party for the next four years if you did that. You, would, you, you might not even get 2022. History shows that you will get 2022 the House. Okay? Now, this is, we had, we had record low unemployment and Democrats took the House. We had achievements during President Trump's administration that President Obama did not achieve. President Obama, his foreign policy led to the destruction of a country. That's why I always bring this up. Libya turned into a failed state because of President Obama and Biden and Clinton. So, but again, they're rewriting history and they're rewriting the law. And they're able to do so because, and God bless the families who are grieving. Um, and, 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 and like that woman should be alive today. That officer, those, those other people should be alive today. But the people who, and it wasn't Trump. Trump didn't tell them to do that. Trump used the word peaceful in the actual uh, rhetoric that they're citing as compelling others to do really ho- horrendous illegal activity. He actually used the word peaceful. But whoever organized that who, or whoever had that idea has stripped away political power from President Trump for weeks, months, potentially a year, potentially longer. I mean, there needs to be, and this is why people should subscribe to this channel. I support President Trump, but... I try to focus on a long-term strategy because I understand the obstacles that Trump faced and that he faces now. People around him, advisors around him, the attorneys around him obviously don't understand the obstacles. I told it through you know, my segments. I said, you know, uh, Rudy Giuliani, Jenna Ellis, all of Trump's legal team, the attorneys around President Trump should just go on Steven Crowder, uh, Joe Rogan, Tim Poole. They should go on MSNBC and CNN. They should, uh, every single ta- chance they got, they should have spread or, or communicated their message. Even if you go to CNN and you get into a discussion, a heated discussion with Anderson Cooper or Don Lemon, at least you will have created a national dialogue. Now, Giuliani, for years, has, go- has gone on CNN. And I don't know why he, has, he didn't in the past couple of months. But it's not like people say, well, that's, would have been, that would have been um, useless. You know, what would that have done? There was no national dialogue. So when you suppress thought and emotion, even if you feel, look, they spent four years obsessing over tinfoil hat fantasies, but they can do that. They have media. They have a virtual monopoly on political discourse. President Trump should have known or somebody should have told him, well, here are the obstacles you face. You face your own Republican Party. You face media. You have intelligence operatives. You have, um, you have Republicans who simply don't want to investigate the claims that you've made. And now look what they're doing to Josh Hawley and Ted Cruz. Look what they're doing. And McConnell is a political animal, is a political creature. It took me a long time to realize Bernie Sanders is a political animal. He's a, a political operative or creature. 
He talks a big game, but then he <laughs> supports people who not only cheated him uh, in 2016, Debbie Wasserman Schultz was forced to resign in disgrace, but but you you have he voted for the next president Biden. Okay? President Biden will not ever sign Medicare for all or Green New Deal or universal basic income. These are the major platform policy ideas on the left. And what Democrats have learned is They've learned that they don't need the Democratic Party doesn't need the far left because the far left doesn't want to be alienated by friends and family and the far left is more focused on the image of being morally superior than actually getting policies through Congress and signed by a president. So they they're just fine. I think I was I was watching one um YouTube channel, the guy was saying, these are the people that I disagree with and completely, but these are people on the left. One, one person was saying, yeah, it'll be 12 years before they get Medicare for all, but it has to be incremental steps. Look what they're doing to uh, Jimmy Dore. Sim- for a simple floor vote, <laughs> he's not saying, for a simple floor vote, he's not saying anything egregious, but any minor, like, push against the narrative that everything Democrats do is right is met with absolute opposition under the guise of, well, you know, our political uh, powers and influences derive from the Democratic Party. And even though we're on the far left, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's the money they raise for certain causes. That really counts. And it's like they're playing you. But Democratic voters don't care about getting played. Whatever CNN and MSNBC tell them, they will believe. This is their... Many of them are atheists, but their god is CNN. Their gods are CNN, MSNBC, The Washington Post, and The New York Times. I know very good people who are atheists, who are liberal, who, uh, through no fault of my own, I probably won't ever speak to again, or the, 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 the friendships have pretty much ended. Why? They claim to be atheists, and that's not, that's not the problem. They claim to be atheists, but their religion... Their religion is democratic politics. So you have people on the left who might not be religious, who might not, but their their the theology that they adhere to is their dogmatic, um, you know, reverence or worship of of this religious doctrine is the Democratic Party media. They worship at the all they pray at the altar of uh, Twitter and Jack Dorsey and social media and CNN and MSNBC and what their friends are telling them. And so you have to understand to 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 media and to Washington DC and to Hollywood and to the family member or friend that can't understand why you voted for President Trump, you don't even really exist. Your vantage point, whether it's an anti-war stance, whether it's President Trump being the first president to step foot in North Korea, whether it's President Trump uh, signing prison reform legislation or allocating more funding to historically black colleges and universities than any president ever, standing up to corrupt intelligence officials, presiding over record low unemployment, record low black and Latino unemployment, having a stock market surge before the pandemic. All of these reasons why, and mainly reversing U.S. foreign policy, bringing home Americans from never-ending counterinsurgency conflicts, all of these reasons are completely irrelevant. In fact, they don't exist. They don't exist to people on the left. They don't exist to that fr- family member, or that friend, or that coworker who doesn't want to talk to you because you voted for Trump. What they see is, oh my God, look what happened in D.C. They forgot. They forget. They, they were not outraged of all the atrocities that took place the the past five or six months. And there were atrocities, ladies and gentlemen. Lives were lost. According to Wikipedia, it was 19 lives lost. But there's probably more. One man, David Dorn, lost his life, and it was actually on Facebook. And nobody, and, 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 but these, but, and he was a courageous, heroic man. A, A very courageous, noble, heroic black man. In his 70s, former police uh, captain or police chief in, in, in St. Louis. But you, do you think that you think that the New York Times or the Washington Post 
Do you think that they treated that story in the same manner they're treating this? No, there's no outrage when, the left, when Democrats and the left preside over tragedy. And there's no outrage when Maxine Waters says, hey, I want you to get in the faces of people. And you have Andy No, Tim Pool, and Ian Miles Chong reporting endlessly for the past five to six months on all the chaos and mayhem linked to left-leaning organizations. But it's not enough now. It's, not, it's never been enough to simply point out the hypocrisy. They don't care. The average liberal is the definition of a hypocrite. They don't care. They, they're, you have to understand, it's their religion. You might believe in God. They believe in, in uh, you know, Chris Cuomo and CNN. They worship at the altar because... What does this have to do with Mitch McConnell? Mitch McConnell knows that he doesn't, he doesn't have media. Republicans are petrified of media. They are petrified. That's why they looked at Trump and they said, oh my God, what do we have? We have this lion. We have this um, giant orange elephant. And he's, you know what? He's, he's uh, stomping on, uh, you know, people we don't like, you know, with the, he is implementing tax cuts and he's doing things we want, but he's also, uh, you know, uh, stomping on uh, our sacred cows, you know, well, well, what's going to happen now? So what we'll do is we'll investigate him. We'll keep him at bay. And uh, But we'll take advantage of all the uh, energy and excitement. And then when something bad happens, we'll blame him, just like the Democrats. And then hopefully media. What do we do with media? And so McConnell might actually vote to convict President Trump if they impeach President Trump. Again, they're doing this as a giant middle finger to President Trump and 74 million supporters. Every night you have to hear preaching from people like Jimmy Kimmel, who performed in blackface, and yet he gets away with everything. The left gets away with everything. You want to know what Madonna said? Right? I can't even, t- I can't even explain what Madonna said the, d- the day of President Trump's inauguration. President Biden will be here for four years, or more, if Republicans are completely inept and actually convict President Trump. You have to get used to Okay, and, and the and the the Peter Navarro report and the issues associated with all the, the the concerns expressed in that government document or that document emanating from the government or a government official that should have been investigated. There should, there should have been calls to investigate, but he didn't have Republicans on his side. President Trump should have known this. There should never have been protests in, on, on the 6th in January. It did no good. It did no good. The, now, for look, in a very weird way, it's gonna, it, this can actually help President Trump in the long term in a very weird way. Not, not even getting convicted in the Senate, if, which would be absurd because he, would, he couldn't be convicted in the court of law because any judge would laugh it out of court. He didn't tell anyone to do anything. That's not what the First Amendment is about. And if you're going to use that standard, then there's like six or seven Democrats who have made even more egregious statements actually telling people to get in uh, the faces of others. But, ladies and gentlemen, Twitter is... Facebook will uh, will last for a while. Okay, but but 10 years from now, they're not going to have the influence they have. Twitter might not even last four to five years from now, and they certainly won't have the influence within the next four years because the past four years and prior to that has been propped up by disdain and contempt for Trump. That's the only reason people go on Twitter. Twitter is a platform that is, it's the most, it's, it's a cauldron, it's a boiling pot of negativity and angst and frustration and only the most negative emotions. So they lost like five billion dollars in market value the past couple of days. They have, they've had five consecutive negative trading days in the market. Okay, their earnings are down. Their, their earnings are going to be down this year, but that's not just because of the pandemic. That's because they have a horrendous business model. It is, Twitter will be the same type of fleeting thought that it champions on its, on its platform. It's just a platform of fleeting, meaningless thoughts that the left and Democrats have utilized for political gain. 
The, the Democratic Party lives in cyberspace. You take away Twitter, what do they have? They don't have any of the left-leaning policies that get people really going, so what do they have? Contempt for Trump? Well, you don't have that now. So what do they have? They have nothing. There's no legislative mandate, nothing. They only have the Lincoln Project people and certain, um, they want to get, okay, so you got back in the Paris Climate Accords, okay. That, yeah, it's going to save the planet. No, it's not. What do they have that's transformative? Nothing. They have tales from the cryptos, but we have tales from the cryptos president now. What do you, what do you, at least President Trump was the first president to step foot in North Korea to begin detente between North and South Korea. That's a, that's a grandiose paradigm changing achievement that President Moon Jae in of South Korea stated Trump deserves the Nobel Peace Prize. But now, <laughs> it's like his, they wanted, what they wanted was President Trump's name to be synonymous with a catastrophe. And now they're going to spin four years into, into well, the past two weeks, and, and look, he's been impeached twice, and you know what, he was just... And they're using words like, oh, well, the, the people that... See, when protesters in Portland or Seattle or other cities engaged in absolute chaos and mayhem with clashes, with police, people getting injured, people losing their lives... That wasn't, they, they weren't the T-word. Those, those Trump supporters who, in, in, the, cap, in the Capitol, that's the, using the T-word. You understand? I can't, I can't use the word, but they're using the T-word. Okay? They've completely lost it. But it's like, President Trump, they should never have been protest. That was his biggest mistake. Because there was no good that could have come from it. Now, politically, because of whoever organized that, that was just an unmitigated catastrophe, and now they're tightening the vice, trying to ban and suppress and silence voices. Trump supporters have gained nothing from what took place. The main thing is the loss of life. Again, you, we can all rebound from this. Josh Hawley, Ted Cruz, President Trump himself needs to go on CNN, MSNBC tomorrow. Have a discussion. Of course, it's going to be they're going to try to make it combative, but don't play their game. Go on all the top YouTube channels. Go on all the top podcasts. Go on on radio stations. Have a public relations actually engage. You don't run. Now is not the time for Ted Cruz and Josh Hawley and President Trump and anyone who supported President Trump to just shrink and, and hide behind a corner or hide under a rock. That's what Democrats want you to do. But if you're Josh Hawley right now, Senator Hawley should absolutely take every single opportunity to state why he supported President Trump. Because there are logical reasons that people need to know. And how about defending the president with, um, he didn't tell anyone to do anything. And if you want to apply that standard, well, here are Democrats. There's a Washington Examiner article. Six Democrats have said worse. Anyway, give me your thoughts below. Um, I don't know. I don't think that's going to happen, but it could. Give me your thoughts. Thank you so very much. Share this segment everywhere. It's very